Good morning, everyone. Here is a Schneider Electric Lexium Integrated Drive, model ILS1 U572 PB1A0. Now, the step and direction inputs are 24 volts DC, uh, the step being a square wave and the direction being a zero or 24 volt steady signal. I have my function generator set to 5 volts DC. I have a transistor, an NPN transistor, to convert that 5 volt square wave to a 24 volt square wave for the step input. And I'll show you the drawing of this circuit right here in just a little bit. But let's see what we get right here when we enable this drive with 24 volts DC to power up the collector, the load resistor of that transistor, and the drive. There's 24 volts DC coming in here to power up that drive. Look, we're running. Let's see how fast we can go. We'll sneak up on it. There's 400 hertz. 600 hertz on the function generator. 800. 1 kilohertz. Moving at a pretty good clip right there. One point two kilohertz, one point four kilohertz. Let's slow her back down. Oh, I <laughs> lost one of the panels. <laughs> Okay, let's go take a look at my drawing of this transistor circuit. Here's the transistor circuit that I'm using to convert this 5 volt square wave from the function generator to 24 volt square wave that drives into the optocoupler circuit inside that stepper motor drive. Now we have a 5 volt square wave on the red lead of the function generator referenced to this black lead which is ground of the function generator. That square wave drives into the base emitter junction of the tip 121 tr NPN transistor through this 1 kilo ohm resistor. That drives this NPN transistor into saturation, which connects pin 6 of CN2, that's the anode side of the optocoupler, it connects this pin 6 to ground through the collector base emitter junction of the NPN transistor. And so now, with pin 6 at 0 volts, or, or fairly close to it, you have some voltage drops here, but they're, they're, uh, they're very small. So in essence, you could say this is 0 volts right here. That turns this optocoupler off. Now, when this output of uh, 5 volt peak, square wave is at zero volts the transistor is turned off and now current flows from the 24 volt DC power supply through the 560 ohm uh, collector resistor through pin 6 through the anode cathode junction and back to ground turning on that optocoupler so with the optocoupler off 
photons do not hit the base of that phototransistor and that phototransistor is turned off. With this LED turned on, current flows through the anode cathode junction and emits photons into the base and now that transistor is in saturation. It is conducting. So we go from a 5 volt square wave here to a 24 volt square wave here with this circuit. Now there's a few things that I need to say about these inputs right here. Our model, the ILS 1U, has 24 volt optocoupler inputs for the step and direction. There's another model, the ILS 1V, it has 5 volt optocoupler inputs. And they're going to be based on these resistor values right here. I don't know what they are, but for the 24 volt DC and the 5 volt DC versions of these inputs, the step and direction input, these resistors are going to be larger for the 24 volt DC and smaller for the 5 volt version. There's also another version, it's the ILS1W, and that has an RS422 input for the step and direction. You have to be very careful if your input requires RS422, the ILS1W version, you do not want to put this 24 volt DC into that 4S or RS422 input. It will uh, destroy that differential line receiver IC inside that drive. So be careful of your versions. ILS1 U, ILS 1V, and ILS 1W. Let's go back to the stepper motor drive and see if we can reverse direction. All right, with no voltage applied to uh, pin five of the CN2 connector, no, no plus 24, with uh, pin 11 being ground, so that would be your anode and cathode inputs to the direction optocoupler, but with no voltage applied, we're running clockwise as looking into the shaft of that motor. Now let me apply plus 24 volts DC to CN2 pin 5, and now we're running counterclockwise. So zero volts on pin 5, clockwise. 24 volts on pin 5, counterclockwise. It's a good running drive we got here. There you go folks. That's how you test your Schneider Electric Lexium Integrated Drive. Very nice drive. Easy to hook up and run. All right, oh. Wasn't that a lot of fun? <laughs> I like doing things like that. I hope you do too. This function generator, which I have step input through this uh, TIP 121 transistor to convert 5 volts to uh, a 24 volt square wave. This function generator has offset adjust, and that means that I can raise and lower that square wave, sine wave or triangle wave above and below zero volts ground. 
I have a function generator here that does not have that offset adjust. Now this function generator is made by Victor. It's model number VC2002, function signal generator. I have a solution to apply offset adjust to the output of this function generator just that does not have that DC offset adjust option. Let me move that function generator out of the way and we'll hook this one up and we'll take a look at the waveforms and my solution to add DC offset adjust to this function generator. transistor circuit that converts a 5 volt square wave to a 24 volt square wave. Let me set this over here. So let's hook up our oscilloscope and we'll look at the waveforms. Hope I don't disconnect anything down there. I'm trying to get over here. We'll hook up the waveforms and we will look output of this function generator. Okay. Let's increase the frequency. And let's see, we're at 10 volts per division. Let's go to 5 volts per division. There's 5 volts per division. Now I can adjust the frequency. I can adjust the amplitude. And let's go to square wave and I'll show you what the D adjust does. Let's go to the square wave. There's our square wave. And I can adjust the duty cycle. Get it close to 50% duty cycle. There's a triangle wave. Let's get closer so y'all can see what, what's happening on that scope. So there's our triangle wave. Let's go to sine wave. And that's a sine wave of 10 volts peak to peak. And we're running at about 100 hertz right there. Now, let me adjust the amplitude with the Victor function generator. And here I can adjust the frequency. We're slowing down in frequency. We're speeding up in frequency. Let me go back to that square wave and I'll show you that with the D adjust potentiometer on the function generator we can change the duty cycle. Okay, that looks pretty close to 50% duty cycle right there. But the one thing I cannot do, I cannot raise, I cannot raise this signal above ground, here's ground right here, or I cannot lower it below ground. It is fixed, centered around ground. But I built a little circuit and put it in a kit box that allows me to raise 
that signal above and below ground. We'll hook that up and you'll get to see it in action. And then I'll put the uh, my drawing of the circuit up at the end of the video and you'll be able to make one for yourself. This is my kit box with the circuit that provides offset adjust to that function generator that, that does not have it. Does not have that option. So here we apply from an external power supply plus 15 volts DC ground and minus 15 volts DC and that powers up the circuit inside this box. The function generator is connected to this post right here and ground so you would have the output of your function generator connected here. Now this ground post right here I'm using screws to clip onto. This ground post right here and this ground up here from the external power supply are tied together. So the grounds are tied together. Now the output of this circuit is on this post right here. Reference to this ground post also. The potentiometer allows you to raise that signal from the function generator above and below ground. So signal in, adjustable, signal out adjustable above and below ground. Let's hook it up and watch this thing work. This is the external power supply that we're going to use to power up the offset adjust circuit. There's plus 15 volts DC. Here's its ground. And here's minus 15 volts DC. Let's take our function generator and apply it to the input. All right, let's bring our scope over and we shall look at the output on the oscilloscope over there. Need to get the ground hooked up over here. Okay, and there's the ground of the oscilloscope connected to the ground. Yeah, this tape and we'll hook up the output of our circuit to the oscilloscope. Here we have a sine wave of 5 volts peak and minus 5 volts peak for a sine wave of 10 volts peak to peak. And we're running about almost 100 hertz. Now with my circuit, we can lower or raise that sine wave above and below ground. Isn't that amazing? Let me lower that trigger point so that's set steady. There we go. Now the hill of the sine wave is at zero volts. It's at ground. And the valley of the sine wave is at negative 10 volts. Let's go the other way. Raise that trigger point. There we go. Now, the heel of the sine wave, the peak, is at plus 10 volts, and the valley is at ground. That's amazing. Amazing little circuit. You can add offset adjust to your function generator that does not have that option. Now let me show you what uh, the what is good about this circuit. Let's go to a square wave. And we're going to make 
a 5 volt peak square wave that we're going to use to run the Schneider electric stepper motor. Now right now the square wave's peak is at plus 10 volts and ground. But we want a square wave. We want a 5 volt square wave that drives into the base of that TIP 121 NPN transistor that converts the 5 volt square wave to a 20 volt 4 volt square wave on the step input of that Schneider Electric stepper motor. So let's lower the amplitude using the Victor function generator. That looks about half. And let's lower that square wave onto ground. Give it a little bit of amplitude there. Raise it up just a hair. There we have a 5 volt square wave to drive into the base of that TIP 121 NPN transistor. Let's set it up to run that Schneider electric stepper motor. All right, here we go. We have the output of our circuit to provide offset adjust to the Victor function generator. The output is going to our level shifter. Now I have an on off switch right here that disconnects the output from the circuit that you're testing. That way when everything's hooked up you can get it uh, set up correctly uh, to the right frequency, the right waveform. You don't want to run a sine wave in, into a square wave circuit. So this, uh, this disconnects that output so that you can get everything good to go. So here, I'm going to turn the output on. And look at that. We're running. <laughs> oh, isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Let's see if we can change the frequency to run a little bit faster. A little bit faster. Nice. Nice. Okay. I'll put my drawing up at the end of the video. And we'll talk about it a little bit when I get to the house. We'll see you there. To begin with, as we look at our circuits and hookups, let's talk about the dip switches in that Schneider Electric stepper motor drive. Here we have off, 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 on for the S1 switch. And what that does, it sets up this drive to run at 200 steps per revolution that's these first three dip switch settings. And dip switch number four here sets current reduction. And in our case, it is on. Dip switch number three down here, we have all off. Off, 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 off. Switch number one is the terminating resistor and we have that off. Switch two and four, two and four here, they're reserved so we just leave that be. And switch number three which is off, that's for the interface mode. If it's on, it's 
A slash B. And if it's off, in our case, it's pulse and direction. We want our drive set up for pulse and direction. Here, switch two, dip switch setting two, we have on, on, off, off. On, function input at CN2 and CN4, on equals gate. S2, switch 2, function input at CN2, on equals PWM, off equals step 2 inverted. Switch 3, function output at CN4, on equals fault, off equals index pulse. Switch S24, stall, uh, stall detection on. And up here, the selector switch is set to F, and that's the phase current motor selection. Now this uh, PDF is easily found on the internet and it goes into great detail on these dip switch and selector switch inputs. Let's go to the next page. Here are the connections to the Schneider electric stepper motor drive. And up here are two spade terminals. This terminal right here, we apply plus 24 volts DC to power up that stepper motor drive. And here we apply the ground of that same power supply. So we have VDC and zero VDC. Plus 24 here and ground here. On the CN2 terminal, this connector right here, on terminals 6 and 12, in our drive, an optocoupler input for step. 6 being step plus, and 12 being step minus. That would be going to the anode of the optocoupler on pin 6, pin 12 going to the cathode of the optocoupler, the LED input of that optocoupler. 5 and 11, 5 being direction plus, 11 being direction minus. So we have 5 connected to the anode of that optocoupler input and 11 going to the cathode of that input optocoupler. So we have a square wave of plus and minus 24 on 6 reference to 12 and we have direction on 5 and 11. When 5 and 11 is open we run clockwise. When 5 and 11 is uh, 24 applied to that 5, reference to 11, we go counterclockwise. Let's go to the next page. As previously stated, on the last page that we looked at, here are our connections. Let's go to CN1 first. This stake terminal right here, labeled VDC, is where we apply plus 24 volts DC. And this stake terminal right here, we apply the ground of that same 24 volt DC. That's this power supply up here, an external power supply. On 5 and 11, that's our direction plus and direction minus terminals on the CN2 connector. When this switch is open, that 
stepper motor drive runs clockwise. And we, when we close this switch and we apply 24 volts DC to 5, reference to 11, this is an optocoupler input, that stepper motor drive runs counterclockwise. Now external to this stepper motor drive, I have an NPN transistor, TIP-121, as we saw in the uh, first half of the video. That converts a 5-volt peak square wave to a 24-volt 24 24-volt 24 square wave for the step input optocoupler on CN26 reference to 12. We gotta hurry up. There's a storm coming. Things is getting dark outside. The bird feeders are getting crowded upon. <laughs> if uh, if you ever wanted to tell whether bad things was coming, just look at your bird feeders. When they get piled on, <laughs> it's going to be a storm. So, the offset adjust circuit. Amazing circuit. You'll have a lot of fun building this. To begin with, let's go over the supply requirements for this operational amplifier. I used the TL071 ACP in an 8-pin dip package. That's this IC right here and right here. Pin 4, VCC negative, minus 15 volts DC from an external power supply. VCC plus, plus 15 volts DC from that same external power supply. And these grounds of the function generator and of the load, the load being whatever you need to drive into of that same external power supply. The operational amplifier circuit is set up as a inverting amplifier with a gain of 1. Here's the feedback resistor, 100 kilo ohms. The input resistor, 100 kilo ohms, that the function energy, function generator is driving into. Now, when the function generator is positive, the output is negative. And when the function generator input to the circuit is negative, the output is positive. That's why they call it an inverting amplifier. To provide the offset to this circuit, we have a 100 kilo ohm multi-turn potentiometer whose wings are set to plus 15 volts DC and minus 15 volts DC. The wiper of that potentiometer is connected to the non-inverting input of this operational amplifier so that if we have a sine wave or a square wave or a triangle wave, if we centered that potentiometer so that we had zero volts on pin 3 reference to this ground right here, the external power supply of ground, the external power supply ground, the output would be centered around zero volts. But when we increase this positive voltage, when we increase this potentiometer so that we have a positive voltage right here, reference to that ground, that external power supply ground, we raise this voltage out here. And when we go more negative, we go more negative out here. So we can swing that output 
positive above ground or negative below ground based upon this potentiometer's uh, setting. The output of the operational amplifier is driving into this circuit right here. Here is our base resistor, 10 kilo ohms, and it is driving into the NPN or PNP transistor based upon whether we're positive or negative at the output here, or whether we're above ground or below ground based upon that potentiometer. This is a totem pole setup. And you'll see this a lot on the output of these TLO 71 ACP operational amplifiers, this very circuit right here. But I wanted to bring it out with a 2N3904 and a 2N3906 NPN and PNP transistors to provide more current drive into the load instead of relying on the output of this operational amplifier which is much lower in current drive capability than this circuit right here. Don't forget your diodes. Your two diodes provide crossover distortion correction. Um, if we on the output are below the diode drop of our base emitter junctions, that transistor is not conducting. And that's called crossover distortion. And these two diodes, they correct for that. Now here's our switch to turn the output of this complete circuit into the load. The load being whatever you want to drive into. I have a resistor symbol of RL. But you saw in the video that we drove into the input of an optocoupler. So our, our, our load could be an LED cathode junction. But this allows us to set up that function generator from sine wave to square wave. Uh, set the uh, point right here to a square wave of 5 volts peak uh, from 0 to 5 volts before we apply it to the load. It allows us to set the function generator up. It allows us to set the offset at this point right here. At this point right here, it allows us to set this whole system up until we connect it to the load. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, the totem pole uh, circuit right here. We have plus 15 volts DC up here at the collector of the NPN transistor. And we have minus 15 volts DC down here at the collector of the PNP transistor. Very simple circuit to breadboard. Very simple circuit to construct. Let's go outside and get ready for the storm. Thank y'all. I really appreciate it when, uh, when you come by and you see what we're working on next. I hope this helps you out. I hope it really does. Build that circuit. I know you'll enjoy it. If not for anything, just for the experiment. Take your oscilloscope and put it right here, and put it right here, right here, these points right here. Put your oscilloscope out here. In fact, what you could do is take these diodes out and just have the connections to the base resistor, the output of the TL071ACP, and experiment. Look at the crossover distortion at this point right here without the two diodes. It'll blow your mind. <laughs> now this load out here, oh, I'm getting sidetracked. I gotta hurry up. Sorry about that. But I've driven into uh, excitation 
inputs to a resolver with this circuit right here, this very circuit right here, and it was able to drive into a coil, uh, R1 and R2, of a sine cosine resolver. It could do it. It didn't buckle under the load. It was able to do it. So there we go. Y'all have a good night. Enjoy the time you got on this side of the dirt. We'll see you next time.